doggy dog and Dr. Dre is at the dump Ready to make an entrance, so whack on one Before I have to strap up a cut Oh my god Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God I don't know, but today seems kinda odd No talking from the dog, no smoke And mama cooked the bacon with no oh. On the cream of the clock, I rise to the top I never eat the pink cup, but pink is a cup Words to your mom, I came to drop bombs No more sauces, mom It's time for bed. <laughs> Come on. I'll tuck you in a little bit. Oh, hi. Welcome. You're just in time for the party. Would you like a cheese puff? Hello. 
I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm having a dinner party and I seem to run out of coffee. You can be anything you want to be there. You can see anything you want to see there. There's excitement in the air for you and me there. Fancy free there. Take your family there. But you've got to be there. Yeah. You've just got to be there. Should be in there. What is that, is that going to go through? I need to go back under there. Um, hopefully, you can hear us. Oh, we've had issues. I don't know if you can hear us or see <clears throat> us. I don't know what's going on. Ever since that Facebook outage yesterday. It's all, honestly, it's um, I've got. I don't know what I'm doing. I'll just shove that in there. Can you hear us? Let us know. If you can, can you hear see us, us? Can you see us? Let us know. Are you looking at us? Honestly, I don't know if this is working. Let us know, because there's no no point talking if you can't hear us or see us. Um, welcome. Oh, good evening. To Wednesday night in the Wigan Slingback. We're being heard loud and clear. Oh, more issues than Vogue. Oh, what a week it's been. It's been a good week though, hasn't it? It's been a lovely week. We had a quiz on Friday, which was very, very good and very, very, uh, very fun to do. We had a dirty step out drink that night as well, didn't we? Drink until 3am. <laughs> Yeah. Saturday we're out singing down at karaoke. And we were out. We were out. Yeah, we were out drinking karaoke. We're doing that for three hours, weren't we? Yeah, but it was all good. It's a lovely weekend. Yeah, lovely. Um, so yeah, welcome. And yesterday we were, do- we were dog sitting, weren't we? We were dog sitting. We had Lily round dog sitting. Yeah, Lily. Um, I've got new glasses, which people are saying they love them. I'm not wearing them all the time. They're a bit like statementy glasses, so I don't wear them to teach. But um. Nice to pop them on. Have you got a new jumper on, haven't you? I've got a new little jumper on, little so stripy jumper. You'll know it's from Boohoo, not Vinted. Uh, so hello everyone, let me have a look at who's in. I'm going to Oh, there's through. loads in. Uh, lovely Darren Bramley and Rebecca are in. I think they're watching from Angleterre tonight. Oh, bon, bonjour. Um, Angela Larson, hello my darling. Andrew Chapman is in. BG Bear is here. BG Bear's talking about McVitie's Jamaican ginger cake. I don't, oh, know, I what, I don't know what the chit chat's about. Nice custard. Uh, Pete Potofsky is in. Hello, Pete, Hello darling. Darlings. Tracy Thirty Tracy, is Tracy, here. Tracy. Stuart Bloody Cahoon. Hello, darling. You well? In. You're home. Says so nice to be back. It's nice to have you here, Stuart. Um, Pete Potofsky says I've missed loads of your conversations. So I'm just going to read edited highlights. Pete Potofsky says my nan used to play the piano in Union Jack Knickers. And so she should. Uh, Nibbles and Bubbles are in. I think this is Shari over this side. Peggy's by my feet. Um, who else is here? Lily Law is in. Hello, love. Hello, darlings. Uh, Coral Daft is in. Coral says, hi, everyone. I was 35 in 1994. Does that make me the oldest member of the Wig and Slingback? Ooh, no, it could be. No, because I think no. my mum my and dad are, are going are oh, yeah, to yeah. um, pump you. What are they going to say? They're going to beat you to that. Um, yeah, mum and dad, how old were you in 1994? Uh who else is here? BG Bear. In, info from BG Bear. I still have the 12-foot scarf my nana knitted years ago. I finished knitting Craig's scarf, so it'll be warm when we go to Iceland next month. Oh, they're going to Iceland, aren't they? Oh, Franny McLeod. Thank you for the stars, but we don't know what to do we with them. I don't know where they go. I'm not sure. So if you've had to pay for them, I'm really oh, sorry. We don't know what, stars. what they mean. But thank you for sending them. Um, but don't send any more, because we don't understand them. Uh, I'm not sure what they are, do you? Carl Duff says, hi, happy birthday to Earl tomorrow. Earl? <sighs> oh, no, it's all it's all gone. Honestly, we've had issues. It's all gone. My buttons are... Silla's got... Where's Silla gone? Silla's not even ready. Oh. 
Oh, we're in we're in dire straits. Everything kind of shut down. Um, Does that mean all our things that are not there tonight? Proud of. No, the photos are there. Uh, I'll have to try and find adverts and things like that as we go. Um, but your happy birthdays can't be played. Um, who else Where's is in? Happy birthday to, to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, who else is here? Like, to karaoke. <laughs> Um, nibbles and bubbles are on chamomile tea. Lily Laws on rhubarb and ginger gin. Chamomile tea. What's going on? Uh, Seven Network is here. Seven Network is on New Zealand Sauvignon. Uh, any other names that I'm missing out? Joel Hazel Dean is in. Lovely Hazel Dean. Um, Stuart Bloody Cahoon got out on Monday. First day out in about three weeks. For his birthday lunch. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Sure, really want to look at this. Happy birthday. We we can't. Well, I'll try and during the adverts, I'll see what I can do, if I can find them. Steam Rocks is in evening all. Steam Rocks, a new name for us. New name, yeah. Hello, Steam Rocks. Uh, Lee Ludlow says it's third kidney stone I've needed surgically removed. Ooh, Ooh the kill. Uh, Neil Sandwell is in. Neil is watching Ooh. in the uh, the Sandwell's Manor tonight. Yes, um, yeah. So it's Lord and Lady Neil and Nessa, and they're watching with Le Grand Dame Barbara. Uh, hello, uh, Grand Dame Barbara. Bonjour, Bron Grand Dame Barbara. Uh, because little uh, Doctor Henry Madison woman is in London watching the Back to the Future. She's in the West Mus West End musical, isn't she? Yes. Uh, MP is in. Uh, Dale Ibbotson is in. Hello, Dale. Hello, Dale, dear. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Linda LaHughes is here. My cousin Lucy. Jason Darcy is in. Andrew Chapman is off to eat his tea. See you, well, Andrew. <laughs> I want him to eat his bloody tea. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. We've missed him. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Looking through the names. Um, I think that's... Oh, Gareth is in. Hola, in Porto. Uh... Pip is here. Shalom, our friend. Uh, my mum and dad are in. Hello, my darlings. Um, I think that might be it. Emotional Marcia. Urban Homestead is in. Caroline is here. Marcia is here. And Ewan is with her. Hello to both of you. Darren Small. Darren Small is here. Dazzle from Brizzle is in the building. Um, t -t 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 I think... Uh, Madonis is here. Madonna. Oh, hello, Madonis. Uh, Will Venus ASMR. I just saw your name pop past. Uh, Madonis is Elijah from Georgia. Uh, JPV is in um, with a picture of uh, Long Distance Clara from Pigeon Street. Um, Pete Tofsky is wondering if Iris Apfel left these glasses in her oh, will to me. Yeah, I wish she, she did. Week, she, she was. A, she's an icon. Uh, my mum and dad were nearly fifty in nineteen ninety-four. Um, so they might be the oldest members of the Wigan Slingback clan. Um, Mika Magic. Mika Magic is in. Uh, Mika, Mika Magic showed us a photo on her phone of, uh, it was a little boy, wasn't it? Dressed as Thora Heard. <laughs> Dressed as Thora Heard in the iconic buttercup cap yeah, buttercup and glasses. Hat, glasses and a little, little scarf, a little cape scarf. A little cape. So funny. Right, over in the YouTube, the Facebook world. Lovely Mark Monday and Pearson. Must play with Ricky and the pup and the cat. Lovely Sarah Simpsons. Oh, our, our receptionist. Uh, oh, no, no, it's Jason Darcy. What's he doing over here? Jason Darcy's popped over to say hello. Uh, Philippe, hello, dolls. How are you? Uh, there's our receptionist, Jason Rigby. Um, helping us stay on track tonight with our electricals. Um, Joel William Hazel Dean has also popped, popped in through to say hello. Uh, Carlos Bobbins Duffer, hello. Oh, I was watching his video last night. Yeah, trouble with tap airlines. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Improve your service. Uh, Gabriel Chasse received a lovely couple of little uh, fridge magnets. Little fridge today, magnets from Gabby Chasse. Um, from the main chorus, um, gay. I think it's gay man's choir. Main gay, main gay male choir. And um, he said he might have to be doing a solo. Mm. Um, Jay Shaw, hello, darlings. Andrew Orm, hello, Andrew. Lovely Mark from Wales. Oh, he's tall. I hope you had a lovely St. David's Day. Uh, followed by a lovely little Nibbles is in. 
and Tushy Washy Tushy Rushworth from Hull. Bethany Williams from uh, New South Wales, Australia. You'll always say that. And is that it? My Sarah Simpson. Oh, we've said Sarah. Simpson. Uh, I think. Bethany Williams. That I think might that. be. Paul Hesselmore. Franny McLeod. Oh, to give us the stars. From, from Scotland. But we don't know what to do with them. Scott, Scott bloody Scott Taylor. from Canberra, Australia. What a, what a bloody spunk you are, Scott Taylor. Uh, we've got. Uh, who else we got? Oh, Timmy. Hello, darlings. Timmy Alexis and Dex Dexter are watching from the Isle of Wight. And Chrissy Lewis. And Chrissy Lewis is watching Hello, from down the road. And Nigel and Neil are Hello, watching Dawlish in Dawlish. Boys. Oh, our Dawlish boys. Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward would like to remind everyone he'll be leaving at nine o'clock because Celebrity Big Brother is on. Oh, I thought he was watching Children's BBC. I don't think I can even... I can't... Oh, there we are. We can bring She's... up Scylla. Oh. And we can bring up that Scylla as well. But the videos, I don't know what's happening with them. I'll have, to, I'll have to fiddle. We'll have a little route round. Yeah. So, 1994, who oh, were you? Do you know, and what were you doing? It doesn't seem that long ago to me. 30 years ago. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, but it doesn't seem like that, does it? What were you doing? I was at, I was at, I was at university, college. In your first year? Second year? Second. So you were a bit cocky by that Yeah, I, I think we might be doing Richard the Third. Hmm. Yes, sir. Getting ready to do that, you know? I was Richard III. <laughs> Theatre. Yes. Get me my copy of Year of the King and yeah. doing Richard III. I did read Year of the King. Of course you did. Uh, 1994, uh, Jay, little Mr. Venus, was born. Will Venus was oh, five. Oh, my little babies. Uh, Will Venus was digging up worms in primary school in 1994. Making mud pies. Jill Barron's just arrived, late to the party. She says, how's Peggy? Let's see if she's there. <laughs> Even that's not working. Even Peggy Cam's not working for Peggy's us. Peggy's a lot better, by the way. She's just a tiny little bit, a bit of a limp little still, but she's trotting on all fours. Um, so she's on the mend. Alex Clark waved goodbye to his teenage years in 1994. Did he? Oh, no, he can't have. He's a little baby. Now that's Ian Tushy Rushworth. Um, Alex Clark um, says, I've been here since the start. She's just been a bit silent and a bit moody, like one of Keeping Faith's children. She's not moody. No, she's she, been there in the background going, I'm not talking tonight, mammy. She's very tall, but she's not moody. <laughs> Alex was just starting high school. Oh, oh, she's a little baby. I was, I'd quit university by 1994. Quit it, I've finished this. I'm leaving this I'm place. Nonsense. I'm too big for this. And I was um, doing musicals. Hmm. 1994, I was doing Whistle, Whistle Down the Wind in um, Leeds at the West Yorkshire Playhouse. And I was also in, I think I was in Cabaret in 1994. Would that be right? No, yeah. I can't have been. Uh, Might have been. Could have been the end of 94. I was 20. It was my 20th birthday in 94. Um, maybe Cabaret was the next year, I think. 1994, yeah, I was doing Whistle Down the Wind and I also did it down in London at the Riverside Studios, I think. And I performed at the Albert Hall. That Sarah year. said she was only four. Was at nursery. Oh. Franny McLeod has just left high school, was 17, working in a restaurant, going out every Friday and Saturday. So you should. Uh, Jay Shaw, working in a residential care for adults with learning disabilities. I was 21 and I had hair. <laughs> I had hair then. Uh, Carlos Bob and Stuffer was 24. Uh, Perinda was doing his A-levels and had a big quiff. Um, let's have a look over here. In 1994, uh, Karen Avey was 33 and returned to Canada from China Ooh. and was missing Chinese food. Uh, Linda, Peggy was under the table, actually. Some... Uh, MP said Peggy's been fiddling with the cables. She minded my tune on. Uh, Linda LaHughes was 21, 22 and was doing teacher training in Derby. Neil Sandwell was rehearsing Le Cajot Fall. And he thinks I was too. I wasn't. This is the thing, Neil. I don't think you saw me in Le Cajot. He hopes you were. Because I think I did Le Cajot Fall when I was 17. Because I had the legs back then. <laughs> uh, now. 
Bloody hell. Um, Lee Ludlow's 25, in Peck and with his ex and going out every weekend. Mika had just turned 17 and me and my pal went to Salou for a week with a small suitcase and a Game Boy. I bet you met a few Game Boys. We partied, I'll remember it well. Uh, Bubbles was doing a little bit of supply teaching with mainly a stay-at-home mum. 1994 was the year Caroline and Dale first met. She provided the dancers for an ensemble show I was in at the old Leisure World in Brid. Oh, hey. Um, Pete Petofsky, I was 20 in 1994. I was working as a runner for a photographer's in Mayfair and getting chatted up by a big swarthy Italian men from the art world. Well, I bet you um, were. Nigel just said, did you say Ro Albert O? Ro Albert O. Uh, Duncan Christie, 1994, I was 31, in a fabulous Newcastle, I had a mullet, which may or may not have been acceptable. This is more comments. Uh, Jason Brett, I was working as a train dispatcher. Ooh, dispatching trains. Beth and Williams, last year of college, hairdressing college at 17, I had bleach blonde curly hair that was looking, that looking back looked like cotton wool. Uh, Philippe said, first year of college, had big centre parting curtains, wearing dungarees, knitted waistcoats, pin like you. Um... Uh, and he got mistaken for his sister by his auntie Nancy. <laughs> uh, Louise Dudman. In Hello. 1994, I was 13. I went to my first ever concert, Eternal, at York Barbican. What does Eternal sing? Um, I want to do... Oh, the one where they go... Oh, I can't remember it. Um, There's one where they sort of like come back with a little pithy comment. Oh, I might be thinking of something else. Group. I don't want nobody else. She's lying. That's not Eternal, is it? No. That's Jimmy Nail. Right, I don't know if this is going to work, people, but I'm going to try and show you some photos. She's just a step from heaven. Let's see. That's there. So. Oh, I know they are straight away. 1994, Wig and Slingbackers. Who do we have here? Bramley Apples. The Bramley Apples. Darren and Rebecca. Rebecca, very on trend for 1994 in... Planet Hollywood t-shirt. I'm noticing short hair, so perhaps she's cabin crew by now. Slightly Bananarama Bob. <laughs> Planet Hollywood t-shirt tucked into which, white jeans. But which Planet Hollywood? Can you tell? Can't tell. London? Rebecca was already cabin crew by this time. So that t-shirt could be from anywhere around the world. Um, Darren was already, I think, working for... GMTV? GMTV. Would it would it have been GMTV in 94? I don't know. Or would it have been TVAM? But there we are. Lovely Bramley apples. Doesn't Darren look dishy there? He does. Look at that. Look at that little... Um, he's got a little beard underneath the chin there. A little goatee. A little moustache and goatee. Um, Pete Potofsky's liking the whole black and white ensemble going on mm. here. Um, Timmy Alexis says she was born in 1994. Was she? Um, next picture... I'm going to go with uh, Rebecca Bramley again. It is Rebecca Bramley in... In the proper uniform. Caledonia. Caledonia, I just a tartan skirt. And look, see if you can see... Can you see? She's in little white gloves. Yeah. That's what I need for my ass, hostess outfit. And is that, and white is, that um, is that like a sort of um, tie? White tie with a pet with brooch? I've just got a memo from reception. Reception says GMTV started in January 1993. Okay, so we're... we're <laughs> Thanks, we're Reception. Right. Jason in reception sending us a memo. So Darren was right. Darren was right. Um, um, the brooch, there's a little brooch, I think. Yeah. But is it a tie? Is it a tie? Have you got a little pussy bow? Or one them cravat tie things. A little cravat tie. But yeah, Rebecca was on the Caledonian, Caledonian flights. And is that a headband or hat? I don't know. We can only hope that Rebecca or Darren's still in and can tell us. Um, okay, next photo. Oh, that's Shari. With her... Shari and Sarah. First, first daughter? Yeah, Sarah. Um, so Shari was a mum. Um, uh-huh. Look how young Shari is. And Shari, what a sh- young mum you were. She's got shut her. <laughs> yeah, she, she, Shari, you could pass by the in that picture. <laughs> rude. You're obsessed with people looking like lesbians. Don't you think that Shari looks like a sort of Green and Commons kind of lesbian look there? Do you know what? She looks She looks like... I like it. She I think you like, look fabulous. She looks college She looks like I'd be at college with her, yeah. Or uni. Shari, you look like you might have um, smoked a roll-up <laughs> in that ensemble. And I'm imagining the, that there's um, a lot of layers, a lot of flowing layers going on. And I'm guessing that Sarah's wearing quite, you know, well-trendy well, well trendy 
gear. Sarah is wearing trendy ensemble. Next. Next, <laughs> next, next mammal. Next babble. Um, oh. You neck colours of betting, Tom? Look how lovely. There we go. Young mum, Shari. Um, Gemma, welcome. Good to see you here. Um, Shari says I was a gym slip mum. <laughs> she was. You could have been a front page of the sun back then. It's a lovely pick of you, Shari. You look absolutely gorgeous. Next photo. Well, the football scarf gives it away, doesn't it? It gives it away. It's our, it's our coral. It's coral. Oh, she's got short, oh, short hair there, isn't she? Coral says, in 1994, she decided to cut all her hair off and go short. And she cried for weeks about it because she was so d disappointed with what she'd done. Well, we know that from the last photo, there was a lot of it, wasn't there? There was a lot of it, yeah, in the late 80s, all off. 1994, time for serious hair. Looks lovely though, Coral. You look lovely, darling. I've just realised you stood by a coach, Coral. In When I downloaded this, I thought you were stood by, um, like, a HGV. Can you not see the Culture United? <laughs> I can now, but I thought she was just, like, stood by it. I thought she was a trucker. So I think... I think oh, hitchhiking, I think, like long-distance Clara. I think uh, Coral and Paul actually come off that coach. Like, you know, like, yeah, we're off to... We're off to well, with all the loud yeah, yeah. drinking the beer yeah, on the pie, coach. Pine and jam shed, yeah. Um, Shari says it was probably Mother Care or Adam's baby wear. And Neil says she was a very good good girl at college. That's what you think, Neil. She was dead naughty behind your back. Um, Timmy Alexis is loving that I just said you could pass for an Olympian. <laughs> Shari knows I love her and I'm only teasing. Right, next photo. You might not know who oh, that I know is. That you is. know who that is. Yeah, because I've seen her eat an orange with Oxo, with Oxo on, it. on it. Yeah, It's Elaine Simpson. It is. It's M Mama Simpson. I never forget her face. Mama Simpson. Marge Simpson herself. Elaine Simpson. Next photo. I know that is all as well. That's, that's her son-in-law. <laughs> Look at his Joel little face. Lou Sweet Corn Hazel Dean. Wearing, oh, Ready Steady Cook. Now that dates it, doesn't it? Wearing a little Ready Steady Cook ensemble. Was that a little oh. present, Joel, from Santa? That'll be when Ready Steady Cook was in its, like, prime heyday, wouldn't it? Yeah. Prime Fern Britain. I didn't know you could get hats, though, and, and aprons. Whole ensemble for Christmas for little Joel. Um, there were, Joel sent me a few photos. But I've only put one in um, just because we've got oh. a lot of photos to pop through. Um, but I'll show you them later. Show me the They're very Joel's cute. Photo. Joel's by a lot of steam engines. Um, next one. Oh my word! Was that? That's t that's Timmy. Oh look at him there! Oh Timmy, the colour of the walls looks like some of the colours of the walls at my college. Timmy's not at college, dear. Is he not? She's in the West End. <laughs> oh Timmy, sorry, I thought that was your room. <gasps> oh, forgive oh, me. Look at, look at what Timmy's done though. She's one of those. Cover it in blue tack, my love. Every every which picture poster goes up. What show were you in? She was in Forty uh, Second Street at the Dominion Theatre. And she got Jason Donovan poster. She's up, got right? a full poster of Jason up, but then just a smattering of other pictures. Cool, I can see it now. It's his makeup table. Isn't it's it? his makeup table, dressing room, dressing room number six, oh. probably. And uh, Timmy met Dex Dexter that year. Oh, did he? Yes. Oh. Another photo. That's Timmy. Again. That's also Timmy. That's Timmy's um, headshot, headshot from that year. Yeah, looking very blonde here. Did you put? Did you, did you put a little blonde thing? Through? I think she's got. I think she's got low lights plus highlights. Yeah. And I'm gonna say it again. You could pass. No, you can't. She, could, she could. there. Look very dashing, that. darling. You look lovely. I could imagine her down blush in Crouch End. I think so. I could imagine her down below. <laughs> blush. Oh no. Right. You got a double whammy here. Is it a couple? Ding, ding. Is it the, ding, the boys? Ding, ding, de, de, de. It is. It's James and Jonathan, my Eurovision twins. Yep. So having their 21st birthday party in at the local rugby club. I was about to say, it doesn't look all that glam, does it? A very butch venue. It either looks like a sort of like old country pub, or as you said, a rugby club. It says there was um, a finger buffet and an inappropriate DJ. <laughs> Oh, and look, you've gone overboard with them Dex boys. Four balloons oh, and, and that, a single banner. And that hanging plant's dead. 
I remember that. I remember them bon catch to you. Oh, boys, I'd love to see some more pictures of the buffet. I remember those waistcoats. I do. Top shop waistcoats. And they're quite oversized. And they were a bit knitted. They were yeah. like a sort of linen knit. And you could get one with a little button, a little wooden button. They were the sort of thing that take that boys sang um, stay in. No, what did they sing in? All I do each night is pray in pray when they're chestless, but they've got a waistcoat over. Very much like that. And sporting the light coloured trousers. Sporting the light coloured trousers. I'm not sure which is James and which is Jonathan because they are twinnies. They are twins. Next one. Oh. You better not know. It's James's husband, Jason. Jason. Oh, Brett. look okay. at you. Yeah, tell Jason. now. Oh, handsome man. Very handsome. And they're somewhere exotic. Uh, abroad? I'm, I think it might just be up Brighton Pier. Is it Brighton? Oh, I'd have let him take me up Brighton Pier around then. Dirty cow. Um, let's have a look. Next photo. Oh, it's our receptionist. <laughs> Oh, he's handsome there, isn't he? Is that for a passport? Oh, she's still got that on her staff badge, hasn't she? She has, yeah. <laughs> uh, she says 1994. Um, she first started going to like gay gay clubs, I think. I like the, um, I like the tie and the little jacket over. Remind me what you said, Jason. I can't remember because it's I can't get into me 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 Facebook account right now. Smart but casual. But was he? Because there's no like apps or anything like that. So if you were gay, you had to kind of like. You had to go to gay clubs. You had to find where gay clubs were and go and meet. Hopefully with friends. Hopefully with friends. I had a very similar ensemble to this. You most probably did, didn't you? And can I ask, when you're in the cubicle getting your photo took, could you choose between a blue curtain and an orange curtain? Or just the or, or just, just the, the, white. the vibrant white. I'm glad he chose the blue. <laughs> the orange one could be a little bit, a bit harsh. Right, next one. Oh, well, I know they are. It's, That's it's, uh, it's the, the Sandwells. The Sandwells. The Sandwells, who met in 1994. They did, actually. I saw this this week because it was their um, anniversary of their meeting, wasn't it? Yeah, no, I think Neil said this what might have been their, de their a date three weeks into their relationship. And they spoke about marriage. Oh, and they're still married now? Oh, and they could look. They could, they could pass as a lesbian couple. No, I'm, I'm only joking. And they've, got, and they've got, and they've got a little baby that's gone to London. <laughs> they've got a little baby that's in that big, big naughty London Down town at the end. moment, watching Back to the Future. I must say, you haven't aged a bit, really, have they? Right. Are we ready, boys, ladies, and gentlemen? Jason Darcy, are you ready for? Oh, hang oh. on. Uh, it was meant to be this one. Can we zoom in a bit? Hello. Oh, she knows what she's doing. Look she? at her on the beat. It's like Baywatch. It looks like some, some magazines I used to read years ago, years ago. <laughs> you just get through the post. Do you know who it is? Yeah. Of course we do. That, my dear, is the lovely Christopher Nibbles um, in very short shorts with a bit of a suntan there. I think that would have had to, would have had to cream you up liberally what that I night. What I like, though, if, if you go down, he's got little plimsolls on. I know, and he still opted for his little sports socks. So that means he's actually playing some kind of sport. So she's not in the water, she's is she? She's not there sunbathing or lolling around. <laughs> she's been active. Is that that's not in Brighton? I think I think well, Chris got, said it's got up here. Chris, where was that? Let us know. It was abroad, was it? Oh, Kefalonia. Kefalonia. No, this one I think. Might, oh. Yeah, this is Kefalonia. Here we go. Jason says living in Kettering, they had a gay group because there were no gay pubs for miles. It was all very parochial, that, and there was a choice of curtains in the um, in the photo booth. But you remember those days? Yeah. Uh, Bubble says four, and she's allowed to say that because it's her husband. But yeah, isn't he a dish? Look at him. Yeah. He's still a dish nowadays. Look at him proud. He must be proudly like that. got that ball on display. He must have that underneath, doesn't he? Yeah, he says he he says he won't get his legs out now. Mm. We're trying to encourage him to get his legs out in the cafe. We think he'd sell more jam splits, wouldn't well, we? Well, if he's not willing to do that, we're going to come <laughs> around when he's at work and cut his jeans down. <laughs> we'll make you have short shorts, some Daisy Dukes. This is the uh, the other one that we, I was going to show you. You see, he's, he's pulling the local ladies. Look, Chrissy Nibbles again. This one I think is a different Greek island. But look, he's proper boy band, isn't he? Yeah. Um, we don't know who this lady is, but she's she's attempting to do little bunny ears. Yeah. She's failing. 
Um, Chris says, if only I had that body now. I think yeah, there's God, a... Eat you. I, th- I think there's a lot of people in the Wigan League back saying that sentence, Chris. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Next one. Is that Timmy again? No. You might not know who this is. Mm. I don't know who it is. Doesn't he look cool? Doesn't he look like one of the cool kids at university? That, my dear, yeah, because he's got half is the face is covered with hair. Pete Potofsky. Is it? Yeah, now let me tell you what Pete said about this photo. Um, Pete said, 1994, I was 20 year old indie kid. I was heavily into the band Suede, hence this whole look. And the wall. Um, hung out at indie discos and I got off with girls butcher than me, which wasn't very difficult. Look <laughs> at that wall. Yeah, that wall's sort of like saying. I'm a little bit gay because I've got it's, pictures of men, but I've put booby women on there. Look, I like Madonna. <laughs> is the hair a bit Katie Lang? The hair is a little bit Katie Lang, but it's a good, uh, it's a good look. I'd have wanted it's to be, ma- I'd have wanted to be mates with him, wouldn't I'd, you? I'd love to have hair like that at that age. No. I'd have wanted to be mates with you, Pete, but I don't think you'd have wanted to be mates with me. I think you'd have been too cool. Oh, and Pete, what's what's going on down here? Let me go back. Oh, hang on, I can't zoom in. You can go back to that and nibbles his legs. Look down there. What, cups? Oh, cups and beer cans on the floor. Weren't you like that as a teenager? Oh, no, I was very tight. Look, there's a, cast, there's a can of Forex down there. Oh, Peter. <laughs> I thought you'd have had a little bottle of Pinot going on. Uh, Jason says, my room looked exactly like that in the 90s. I'd have been 22. Yeah, my room looked like that. I had pictures, like, covers of the Face magazine. There was a magazine called Sky Magazine. Do you remember that? Well, magazines back then actually put posters in them, didn't they? Yeah. On purpose. Castle Main 4X. And uh, Pete said he's po- probably um, fingering a Pet Shop Boys CD right there. I think it is. Nurse Gladys Manuel. Um... Now, I'm, I'm going to guess here, just because she's already said she was four. I'm going to say it's Sarah Simpson. Sarah Simpsons. We saw her mum a little minute ago. There's her I'm daughter. I'm loving this outfit, though. She looks um, like a district nurse, <laughs> doesn't she? You know, the one that come around in the car. Should that little, should the little underbonnet have been tied behind the hair? I think so. I quite like the look. <laughs> and I love that she's dressed for winter. Cause she's got a little striped jumper on. I, well, yeah. But it's not that's not medically safe to have those sleeves. And she's got slacks on. <laughs> she wears all her medical equipment. In a car. <laughs> she's just arrived at this address. To give somebody a, a, a chair bath, whatever they call them. She reminds me of a district nurse more than a she, yeah, she ward does. nurse. Yeah, I she, think it's because she's got a cape on. Pop round your house, sort yeah. you out. Um, oh, that's so cute, Sarah. Here we go. And the last one. Uh, that is... Um, that's um, Philippe. Filippo Giacomo. Now, Filippo Giacomo might be responsible for my whole mindset because Filippo Giacomo actually said, I could be mistaken for a lesbian in this yeah, picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The proper, like, college picture, isn't it? And That's he's like... wearing exactly what I used to wear, which is their sort of granddaddy tops with loads of buttons down. Does that look... That, that looks like of... a sort of drama gang as well, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. They're about, they're about to do impro, aren't they? Yeah. There we go. Um, I think Scylla Black has joined us. Scylla. Oh, Scylla, where have you been? Where were you last week? Because we had all sorts of stuff lined up for you. We even spoke about Surprise Surprise, didn't we? Yeah. All sorts of Scylla last week. You were Miss Scylla. Right, I'm going to try and play the adverts for you, but it's going to take a moment. So give me a second and the adverts should appear. The um, adverts will be with you in just a couple of minutes. Wow. Talk about sheer terror. (laughs) Well, what did you think so far? Listen, this side is about to come to an end, but I want you to be sure and flip over to the other side where the best of Hollywood beckons. Um, I'm going to freshen up a little bit, so I'll see you on the other side. Honey, why don't we get some more wine, uh, more hors d'oeuvres, more everything. Okay. Okay. Thousands of guys call Gay Exchange every day. Dial 0891 34 34 34 and make contact with the right men right here, right now. Hey. 
Here's my poem. I began politely. Excuse me, but that's my drink you'll find, I think. He was six foot five with a broken hooter. He did not answer. He had cloth ears to boot. Uh, I continued more tersely. That Holston export is mine. I bought it because it tastes divine. Give it back, I insisted. And he twisted and came near. And I'll never forget the fear as he said, I'm terribly sorry. Could you pass my shandy? Holston export, the tasteless pure ruddy poetry. Here at the pump room in Bath, we've invited the regulars along to talk about what they think are the usual cakes. Beautiful patisserie. Yeah, Delicious. The whole thing's superb. I think it's excellent. What we didn't tell them was that we used half-fat delight double. Most people said... I couldn't tell the... No, any difference. Delectable. Absolutely delectable. I didn't know. Too to busy to? Yes. <laughs> if it's delicious and light, it's delight. Can you spot the difference? Whose detergent was better at tackling tough, greasy stains like cooking oil? Don't be coy, girls. Uh-uh, Julie's needs a second wash. But Jean's powder is the winner. Which is it? It's Ariel! Trust Ariel. Not just nearly clean, but really clean. Jess! Yeah. I've just been round to see our new neighbours. Very nice, but oh, really? lime yeah. green sofa and mauve. Mm carpet. Uh, and when yeah. they offered me a cup of tea, yeah. it wasn't PG tips. Really? What? No PG? God, have they no taste? Mm. You can really taste the difference in a cup of PG. Tender tips make tasty tea. A golden cup of PG. That's what I call good taste. Social, what was their house like? Oh. If you want to talk man to man, dial 0891 343434 now and make contact with men you'd like to know better. When you call, you can exchange messages with guys online now. Or perhaps you're just curious to know what people are saying. It's fast, friendly and fun whether you're talking or listening. So call 0891 343434 now and make contact with men you'd like to know better. It's the weekend, and this man has lost his traveller's checks. And so has he. He hadn't bought American Express traveller's checks, but this man insisted on them. So while this man would get a refund, but not quite yet, he just made one call to American Express. While he wished he'd known that independent research had proved that on average American Express provide the fastest weekend refunds worldwide. American Express traveller's checks. Gentlemen and the women, the new range of Gino Ginelli sweats from the Sprang Collection designed to your briefs without a restraint. Without a restraint. See. Si. Tutti frutti, chocolate nut, minty chocolate chip, a toffee Fuji. Fuji. Fulch. Fulch. Vanilla and a toffee ice cream with a toffee sauce swirls and Fuji beats. Gino Ginelli. It's the ice of fashion. Oh. Ice of fashion. <laughs> the new spring collection. Gino Ginelli. Oh, no. You never forget how to ride a bike. It's like, well, riding a bike. Did you stop for lunch? Lunch? Lunch is for wimps. Well, at least it stayed dry for you. How's the bike? That bike, you know, it almost feels part of me. Oh, that'll be the saddle. Get your dad a cushion. Don't be alone. Need to make new friends. Just pick up the phone. Oh, eight, nine, one. Big <laughs> eight, chat. Thirty-five, thirty-five, thirty-five. Hi, I'm back. And so are you. You know, I feel as though I know you. Well, at least we share some of the same tastes. Oh, I'm sorry about the cheese puffs. I ran out. But I still have quiche. Don't get b -b 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 bored. Call ch -ch -ch chat date. Make new friends. Hello. I, I, like, I like that advert when the, the, they're all doing that in the basement. And the guy's like, he, he sort of looks up his apartment like he's got them all locked up in there. He probably has, dirt, dirty, yeah. dirty guys. Say no, be a minute. <laughs> Back then. 
Hello, back again. It's now time for us pair. Right, let's have a look. I've got to open up things on my computer and hope that it is working. Ah, oh, look at you. There's me in 1994. Oh, you look like a lesbian. <laughs> Touche. I probably was. There we are, that's with my friends, that's Joe Boobin and Lawrence and Woody. Like and Woody, Woody I saw on uh, last weekend, didn't I? You and Woody got little paper cups. Oh no, you... I haven't got a paper cup. You got a can of beer? I've probably got a can of beer. I'm probably, probably hiding a cigarette out of shot of the camera. Back then I smoked. Um, I'm in a nice corduroy jacket though. You look lovely, <laughs> very fresh faced. And a little leather blouse, little leather shirt and my little glasses. I love these, you know, everybody's got these photos from the 90s. I've got them. We're all very pale, aren't we? It's it just, a cam is it camera flashes? Camera flashes and not editing and red and light. Stuff. We've got yeah. red eyes and... Um, Rebecca says that I look like Harry Potter. You do. I, I played Harry Potter for a launch of one of the books back in the day before there was movies. And there we are. Same me, 1994. Same kind of gang. Uh, three of these people I spent last weekend with, didn't I? Are you wearing leopard print? No, I'm in a suit. I'm in a nice oh, smart suit. Oh, it's a little gentleman's scarf. Oh, yeah, I've got a little scarf on. I'll have one of my long coats. It was a big, big Jamie's long coat for a, for, uh, face. Rachel, oh. Rachel's in leopard print. I think we'd just been to see... Um, There's something there in somebody's hand. What's that saying? Macbeth. Oh, uh, it's most probably just a, a ticket to get into... Um, a bar. To get into a bar or something. Get into a gay bar. I think I think me and Rachel had just been to see something at the Donmar Warehouse. Mm, well, you would. Theatre. So that's me in 1994. Let's have a look at our Alan in oh, 1994. Sorry for, sorry for taking the piss out of you. <laughs> me being a wanker, reading a theatre book. I was only I was only posing. Theatre. I didn't actually read it. I just picked it on the shelf and pretended to read it. Improvisation Starters by Philip Burmont. <laughs> I love you for being upside look at you, down. You look lovely. Oh, look, I had her. Uh, you had her? Oh, 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 little gay oh, earring. I had a gay earring. Oh, I was gagging for it, wasn't I? <laughs> oh. You were getting it, weren't you? Not really, not a What's going there. on there? It's a friendship bracelet. <laughs> I don't care, I'm getting a bracelet. I don't care, I'm getting a friendship bracelet. <laughs> I, I love my college years. Who's this that lovely lacquered table? I don't know. I think I'm at a house party. <laughs> Showing off. Oh, you look lovely. We met only a couple of years after this, didn't we? We did, yeah. I sort of looked like that, didn't I? Yeah, did I sort of look like that yeah, in my picture? Yeah, you did. Um, right, so we then... Sarah, Sarah bless her, says, you've not changed, Alan. I think I have, darling. <laughs> you're, ever so, you're ever so sweet and polite, but yeah, I have. So we've chosen some telly that we would watch on uh, this week in 1994. But, to be honest... I didn't watch much TV in 1994. I wouldn't have watched much telly in 94. When, when the college we went to, if you uh, if you were training during the day and you know learning, in the evenings you were in other people's plays, so you're forever all rehearsing. So you, I don't know. But these are the programs I would have watched if I was if you were ill or at home. Yeah, at home. So Friday the fourth of March, we looked through the uh, the Radio Times and the TV Times of that day. So BBC One, BBC Two, ITV and, and Channel 4. ITV and Channel 4. That's what they're highlighting. Um, but that's not what we would watch. So let's have a look. We'll start. Oh, have I lost that now? Oh, hang on. I'm losing everything. We go back that way. Here we go, Jamie. Let's have a look. So we're going to start. Early doors for me. I'm going to start with... On a Friday morning. Oh, of course. You liked that, didn't you? Uh, the Big Breakfast. Do you know what? I, I loved The Big Breakfast. This is like cl the classic Big Breakfast lineup. Big Breakfast was new in 94. Maybe it'd only been around about a year. Uh, reception, can you tell me when The Big Breakfast started, please? Reception will let us know when that started. But of course, you've got Gabby, Chris uh, Evans, kind of changed the face of telly, really. Didn't they? I mean, yeah. this did change well, the did. face of telly. In the, in the morning, you sort of... I mean, even GMTV was meant to be a little bit funky. But this topped it, didn't it? And it kind of... It broke the illusion, didn't it? That it was, So it showed the crew, and the crew laughed along, and you saw camera people, and... And it was in a proper house, wasn't it? It was in a proper house, yeah. yeah. 
Um, and Paulie Yates, of course, um, who I did adore, and she was up on the bed interviewing people, being mm. like saucy, provocative that early in the morning. And Mark Lamar. Where is he now? Um, who, yeah, used to go and knock on people's doors, I think. Reception's just sent me a memo. Let's check. 28th of September, 92, Big, Bro- uh, Big Breakfast started. Um, Gemma briefly dated a cameraman from The Big Breakfast. Uh, Carlos Bobbins Duffer met Gabby Roslin on a game show and threw a glass of wine over her by accident. I bet she would have minded. Uh, lovely little Perinda. Remember him in his shorty shorts? Yeah. Loved Zig and Zag back then. Yeah. Um, Pete Potofsky says, of course, Lily Savage was also great on the bed. She was, wasn't she? Lily Savage was brilliant on the bed. All those... Um, like American celebs who turn up and this this scouse drag queen's lying back on a bed to be to interview them. I remember Vanessa Feltz being on the bed. Do you remember she used to as well? Yes, yeah. We, she did it when we met, didn't she? Yeah. Because we narrowly missed out on oh, going yeah. to the Big Breakfast. We were working at Momi there, weren't we? Which yeah. Which had zigzag. zag. Um, and because our shift fell on a morning that... We were due at work... We couldn't go. We couldn't go. They had to send the other shift. But the other shift that weren't working that day was sent to um, the big breakfast dressed in Halloween outfits. Oh, do you know what? It wasn't because uh, my usherette went. So it must have just been who fitted the outfits because the woman I was working with went as Morticia Adams, didn't she? Yeah. But of course, they're not going to send little Harry Potter as Gomez, are they? So they sent one of the yeah. older actors and they got they got us um, Vanessa Feltz's autograph. Um, They only just sort of stood around, didn't they? uh, Alex Johnson remembers a cameraman on The Big Breakfast that they called the Carpet Monster. Gemma, is that who you dated? Oh, I remember him. He had glasses and a... Um, Scylla would like to know if if The Big Breakfast stole GMTV's viewers uh, from Darren Bramley. And also, I'd like to know, Darren, did you ever want to do that sort of telly, like Big Breakfast, where you you were on and it was all a bit kind of more clumsy and fun and casual? A bit ad hoc. Pete Potofsky says, look at Paula's dress. It's amazing, oh, no. isn't it? It's fake AstroTurf grass, dress, it? little um, chilies and vegetables around it. So that would be the first thing I would be watching in 1994. Alan, of course, is at university, so he's not going to get up um, until the afternoon. Excuse me. So I was doing vocal warm-ups at 9am every bloody morning. <laughs> Alan's first telly of the day la, la, is... La, 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 la. Messages that were frozen. Maybe we're frozen. I'm not sure. People are saying it stopped. It's buffering. Don't worry. We're still live on Facebook, so we're going to keep going. Um, I don't know if anyone. Oh no, we've crashed on Take the High Road. Says Scylla. Um, oh. Fingers crossed. They're all going to Facebook now. Hanging out. Um, Must be an issue with with uh, YouTube. Issue with all sorts oh, of yeah, stuff at the look. moment. Um, we're back. We're back. Says Dale. It's back. And we're back. Okay. So we were talking about take um, the high road. Or Mrs. Mac. Alan was talking about Mrs. Mac. We were discussing a woman in a red beret, leather gloves, and maybe a tuby grip round the knee. She's like, uh, yeah, she's old. I can't remember. <laughs> Little sheepdog. And then Alan said, her Poss- in the green. Possibly more ag. Her in the green. Uh, you scarf. are shall dry. <laughs> um, Pete says the whole issue, YouTube froze because there's far too much tartan on the screen. Um, so let's have a look at another pick. Let's have a look at what I would watch next in the day. Um, I would say lunchtime. Lunchtime, I'm probably going to tune into Home and Away. Yeah. Um, it's early days for Home and Away. This is far too early. This picture isn't 94, but can you, you recognise... You, of course, recognise her at the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, that's Vera Bennett. How glam she looks. And look at Ray Ma. Ray bloody Ma, with his hands and on Judy Nunn's shoulders. Judy Nunn. <laughs> um, her at the front, there in the... She's still in, isn't she? No, not little Sally, the one next to her. All right. Bobby. Bobby had just died. Oh, 94, yeah. Bobby had just died. Um, That girl there, I sort of like to emulate her kind of fashion, don't I? Yeah. When I dress up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'd be watching probably a little bit of Home and Away and probably a little bit of Neighbours as well. But back then, could you watch Neighbours at five, five o'clock? Yeah, but if I'm off school, I'm watching it at lunchtime. I'm most probably watching... We used to watch it twice. Watching a double You could actually watch it third, three, third time the next day, couldn't you? Uh, 
sometimes you could watch Neighbours at like nine in the morning or something. Yeah, so it'd be, his third, it'd be the third repeat, second repeat. Look at all these people. He was on the Big Breakfast as well, wasn't he? Mm. Um, right, who's that? Who's that sort of slick, greased baby? Is it Daphne? Think Des and Daphne's baby? Do they have a baby? Well, Daphne famously had a baby through tights. Well, is, is it Des holding the baby? Well, that's Des holding the baby. Well, it but, must be his baby. But also, Madge is holding it, look. <laughs> yeah, but it's only because it's next to her. <laughs> is that Kerry? Next Who's to your favourite character on that picture? I think I know who it is, and I'm going to zoom in on her. Dink. Yes, Aunt Hillary. Aunt Hillary. Actually, let me I try. Love, and... Do you know, I love Battle Axes. I used to love Auntie Mim in it. I love Mrs. Mangle in it. Who's this woman? And that guy? Who are they? Right, we know Jim, but who are those two? They can't have been in it for long. I don't know. That's why are. we need Helen Beat here. Is Mario de Groot there? <laughs> Scylla says it's baby Jamie. And someone else says it's Ted's and Daphne's baby, Jamie Clark. I noticed that little nipper down at the bottom. Uh, isn't that... Um, looks, his, isn't that Toby Mangle? He looks like he's got the face of a 50-year-old. Bloody Toby Isn't Mangle. He? Toby bloody Mangle. I think it's Toby Mangle. It's got like an old man's face. And that's Christian Schmidt. I remember him. He was late. He was in loads of posters, wasn't he? Look in and all that. <laughs> um, Stephen Lodge says, Hello boys, I've only just stopped by. Do you remember when Sally and Home and Away blossomed overnight? Mm. <laughs> we we don't remember that. We're, we're um, bachelors. Right, let's have a look. Next programme. Alan's next programme. After Take the High Road. We swap to the evening with our Alan and we're tuning into Celebrity Squares. Love Bob Monkhouse, but also you've got nine celebrities. Uh, most probably Willie Rushton was one of them all every week. But you have like Dino Doors. This is in the 80s, not 90s, because I think she died by then, didn't she? I'm not sure. Um, shall, yeah, I ask, not... shall I ask reception? Hmm? Shall I ask reception? Yes, re- ask the receptionist. So reception? When, say... did, when did Diana Doors die? Yeah. And reception, could you give us the names of some celebrities from 90s episodes of Celebrity Squares? Things like Pat Coombs, <laughs> Willie Rushton, of course. Um, um, what the guy? Um, we used to wear the left and right boots. Jimmy Cricket? Yeah, he must be was on it. Uh, Jill Gascoigne might have been on it. Um, Do you know what? Do you want to know something shocking? Until I met you, this is shocking. I'd never ever watched an episode of Celebrity Squares. Well, I, I, I very much can believe that. <laughs> Never. Because you're busy watching BBC Two, weren't you? Is there a bit of it where if they I... all swap places? Oh, yeah, they might have done. So they all go up, down, up and down little ladders. Or have made that that might be Lucky Ladders. That might be the one where they do punchlines of jokes. With um, Punchlines Len- with Lenny, Lenny Bennett. Lenny Bennett, yeah. I don't think they moved in Celebrity Squares. Um, Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward is hashtag livid because we're favouring YouTube comments and we're missing comments over here. Timmy, Alan's meant to be in charge of the YouTube comments. Has he said anything? Um, I'm not sure. But Honestly, they're not big chatters over here. He says he's never watched Home and Away, dear. Jason, it was uh, Neighbours was where oh, he watched. Oh, no, yeah, you, you did comment there. Um, Jason says Maggie Kirkpatrick and Val Lehman both appeared on Bob's Celebrity Squares. Well, Val Lehman was over here at that time, wasn't she, in the 90s? Because she did appear on Antics Roadshow once. <laughs> did she? As just a punter, not... Really? Yeah. They, they didn't say it's Val Lehman? No, nope, she came with an item. What did she come with? I don't know. It's... Was it something from Cell Block? No, I remember it. Going, that's that's beastly, that beast me. <laughs> right, let's have a look. What am I watching next? Oh, uh, right. Alan will hate this programme. In fact, I don't think Alan will have ever watched an episode of this. Do you know what that is? I've got no idea. It's American. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not know who that is? You recognise her, though. Is it her from the um, fashion programmes? No. Nina Conti? No, what's her name? No. What, Nina, Ga- Nina Garcia? Nina, Nina Garcia, <laughs> that's who she looks like. The, the editor of chief of Elle magazine. What program is this? Um, she's the little girl that played little Bette Midler in Beaches. Oh, okay. So this is her sitcom, After oh, Beaches. Oh, Blossom. Blossom. Nah. Um, look, there's lots of... Blo- Blossom, like, it's, it was awful, dreadful. Started in 1990, I think, and me and my best friend Caroline were obsessed with Blossom because it was so bad. And because me and Caroline kind of were, like, eccentrics and weird at school and we didn't really fit in, we used to pretend that we went to an American high school... <laughs> 
<laughs> Far too old to be doing this. And yeah, we used to pretend that we were Blossom and Six, which is her fast talking best mate who oh. wear like quirky hats. That's her alcoholic, drug addicted brother, and that's her other brother who was like a hunk who people liked, and that's her dad, single dad, who was a musician, I think. Love the hairstyles, I know. Franny McLeod says, I still know the theme tune. I bet a lot of you can sing the theme tune. And Blossom, like, beatbox danced at the theme tune. And Nibbles loved Blossom as well. I bet he did. And he says Six was his favourite character. It's Fast Talking Six. Let's see if I've got a picture. Uh, no, I haven't got any more Blossom pictures. Yeah, so I'd watch Blossom. I think that's on at six o'clock on Channel 4. So I'm still kind of early evening. Alan's already late into the evening. Alan's next programme is Straight After Celebrity Squares. Shall I tell you why? Corey. Because when I looked at the TV Times that you sent me, um, the storyline was around Maud. <laughs> oh, was she? Is she Prime 94? Yeah. She was brought in as... Um, Sherry Houston's mother, and then she started running the shop. What, like single-handed? No, she had people help her, but she was in the chair, in a wheelchair, in the shop with a little, with a little tabard on. Was she? Yeah. And she was just like the the, the replacement battle axe, because Phyllis was on her way out. So she oh, came okay. in. And then Phyllis was gradually too old to be in it. What What's going on over here? It's most pretty celebration cake. Congratulations on your engagement... Maureen, Maureen and, and Reg. Reg. Is that them too? Yeah. And she didn't really like Reg and he didn't really like her. So there was lots of, there was lots of comedy stories. Um, you remember the waterbed? Uh, reception's come through and said 1994 was the final appearance of Ivy Brennan because oh. Lynn, Lynn Perry was sacked about her lips at that age. Yeah. Jason Darcy saying, Maud! Andrew Chapman saying, Maud Grimes! Pete Petofsky said, I wasn't that keen on Maud. I preferred Phyllis. Well, I did, but Phyllis was on her way out. Shari says, look at those classic barmaids. I know. Look who, let's see who we've got. Is we've... it all three of them? Were they yeah. all barmaids? Yeah. Or oh, what a line-up. We've got, we've got the lovely Sarah Lancashire. Um, Beverly Callard. Ra- Ra- uh, Raquel... Walston Hume. Yeah. Got, we've got uh, Liz. <laughs> Beverly Callard, Callard Netics. Yeah, and we've got the lovely... Um, oh, in, Goodyear, in, in a wig that Will Venus is currently perfecting. Oh. That very wig. I can't remember the name of it. It's called Coronet. A Coronet, yeah. And then we've got Reg, who annoyed me. And would Bet- Betty still have been around? Oh, yes. But she's just not featuring in this picture. No, she would have been around. Oh, look, Bet's put on a spread. What do you think not, that's it's Betty? Not, it's not our part. <laughs> Just finger sandwiches for Maureen and Reg. So yeah, loved, loved, loved Maud. Uh, do you want to see uh, your other Maud picture? Yes, pop it on. Oh, Smock Bob says I remember seeing Maud in Bad Girls. She, she was, I think she was. She was somebody's grandma, I think. Here we go. There's my, there's my photo of Maud. There's our Maud from when we uh, recreated Corrie throughout the years. Yeah. Oh, look at you. Right, Jay. Our receptionist said that Betty Hot Pot must be... She only did um, lunchtime. <laughs> did lunchtime, yeah, not an evening so function. she wouldn't do an evening buffet. <laughs> um, right, my next programme, Alan will never have watched this. In fact, I don't think many of you will have watched this. The what? The Living Soap. This was BBC Two. This was 7.15 on BBC Two. The Living Soap was kind of the first or one of the first that I knew, reality TV programmes, like Fly on the Wall, and it was in a student's house in Manchester. Oh, right. And it was about like them getting on with each other and the arguments. So there was like an American thing called The Real World, mm. and BBC Two made this version called The Living Soap. Okay. It's well worth watching. You can find it on YouTube. I think Alex, Alex and Mark, you might quite like The Living Soap. And I think when people left the house, viewers could like vote for who was the next person to replace them in the student house. You had like a lineup you could choose from. And you couldn't find any pictures of it? Well, there are pictures, but I just wanted the name of it, The Living Soap. Just to prove it was there. Just to prove it's there. Um, but yeah, The Living Soap. Anyone remember The Living Soap? Carlos Bob and Stoffer, yeah. Was the theme tune an M People song? It was. It was, I'm coming home, I'm coming home to your house. Uh, Smock Bob has read the Lynn Perry book, Secrets of the Street, and so have I. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> I think she's on a little phone, isn't she's she? on a phone on the back cover, like in a car as well. So it looks like she's a. a I think the last. Cab. I think the last line is, "Well, life goes on. I'll keep you posted." <laughs> so we used to say it. Chris says the living soap so bad. It wasn't bad, Chris. It was great. This is ringing a bell. 
Um, Timmy says Sylvanian Waters was the first fly on the wall. Oh, which Timmy, Alan loves. Timmy, 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 I love that. Um, but yeah, the Living Marlene. Soap. Marlene. There's a guy in the Living Soap called Colin who comes in it later episodes and he's kind of like posh and gay. And um, he sort of gets on everyone's nerves and he's got like punky hair. The um, And there's a girl called Spider who was annoying in it as well, I think. The first fly on the wall documentary was actually in the 70s called The Family. The Family, yeah. Which um, is actually on, well it used to be on YouTube so I watched it and that was really good. Eight o'clock, you are tuning in to After Coronation Street, you're flipping over to BBC One and watching... Hooking Street! Hooking Street! You didn't watch this either, did you? No, my dad, my dad did, my dad would have liked it. I don't. I. I didn't really like it. Oh, You've, it was so funny. You love them. Oh you? yeah, so funny. I mean, to, it proves it. There were so many series of it, and all them specials. And you know what's going about to happen now, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a nineteen ninety four moment? It could be. I chose it mainly because because it's moment. yeah. But um, yeah, I thought it's a. I, I own it on DVD. I loved it. Do you know, I, I remember, like, the early episodes being a bit, like, weird. And then I remember, like, the ones with the man with the big beard, Uncle Alban. Mm. Well, he, I remember he, he replaced the granddad. So I remember those episodes a little bit. And then when it started, like, when Rodney married Cassandra and De- that sort of era, I kind of got bored with oh, it. Oh, no, they're funny. Because um, they're, um, Del and, um, what's her name, Roxy? Is it Roxette? Roxy? No, what's she's called... Marlene. Raquel. Oh no. <laughs> they have a they have a they have a, they have a son called Damien, who just looks like he's like from the horror movie. Well, yeah. Then it goes and, and gives Rodney like the evils. Do it go into the future as well? I think that's a dream. Oh, is it? And then oh, there's the little there's the little specials, which um, anybody who bought the box set were quite freaked off because the specials weren't part of the box set. There's like funny so mo- to like you to pay extra for them. Funny moments though with the oh, chandelier, oh, yeah. with the blow up dolls. Yep, and, and with the, Batman the, and Robin, there's the glowing paint, but there's yeah. the rare butterfly. Didn't do it for me. Um, or oh, does it for me? I think I think Timmy's Timmy and Dex didn't watch it. Yeah, they hated Fools and Horses. It was a little. Yeah. It was a bit too ITV for me, and it was on BBC One. No, I just didn't. I did. It just didn't tickle my funny bone. Um, but I, you know, I was watching Blossom. <laughs> <laughs> what can, how can I talk? The, li- the living room, what it's called. The living soap, right? Although, <laughs> although I'll I'll eat my words in a minute. I think we're at the end of my the end of my uh, viewing. I'm popping onto Channel Four, and I'd watched Channel Four of a Friday night. Um, oh, yeah. And Roseanne, I'd have watched. Um, I loved Roseanne. It was like, it was funny. It was different. I loved Darlene, that girl. Yeah. Um, and they were I just rough. liked it. They were a bit rough. They were rough, weren't they? Which was was rare. Yeah, George Clooney was in it in the early days. I also liked Jackie, Roseanne's sister, a lot. Mm. I didn't really like Roseanne. She kind of annoyed me. I had a bit of a th- you weren't you? Well, you won't be surprised. I had oh, a bit of a thing for John Goodman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wasn't she, wasn't she, um, Shirley Winters her mother? Was she? I think so. Um. Let's see, anyone who says uh, about Roseanne. Nothing about Roseanne. Oh, there we go. Gem Alexander. It was my Friday night favourite. Do you remember when they switched Becky's... Yeah, this girl in the back. Mm. Um, they switched her. And then they did something really clever when they brought it back. They did something where the other Becky came in and it was... I can't remember. They did something clever. Um, Sandra Bernhardt was in it, says Pete Potofsky. She was. I remember being in it. Um, and didn't he leave? Dan leave? She was on her own. No. No. He might have done in this, but then they did do the Connors, which is like a newer, oh, that might be like, it. come back. And that then, of course, Roseanne, of. like, made, like, got cancelled. I think Roseanne herself got cancelled, but they're still, the, the Connors might still be happening. I'm not sure about that. I think it is. Uh, can um, we ask our receptionist, um, um, was Roseanne's mother Shelley Winters? Oh, yeah. Oh, Shelley Winters, sorry. Reception. Who played Roseanne's mother? Um... Alex Johnson says the word Euro trash, bottom, uh, Golden Girls, all of those were Friday night things. But we're picking from a specific Radio Times. So they might not be uh, on that. 
I mean, I mean Golden Girls would have been on my list if it was on. Tushy Rushworth says Dan died in it. Oh, did he? And uh, Timmy says Joan Collins was Roseanne's sister in it. Was she? It all went a bit weird at the end. Joan Collins was in it, I think. Oh, yeah, I think she was. And Patsy and Adina were in it, I think. Or they did... Did they do an ab fab? I can't remember. Um, Philippe Jack says they killed Dan off, but it was a dream. Joan Collins was in it, says Andrew Chapman. Um, Peep Tosky says, I love the titles. And there was that phone. You remember the Cousin. phone? Cousin. Do you remember the phone? With the big cord. Oh, I was trying to say, I wanted one, did you? Yeah, that you could take the phone from the kitchen all the way to like the front door. And it was the first time I saw the um, the, the pictures of the dogs playing poker. Yeah, it was it? Yeah, the, the, it was on their wall by it was, the door. It was Estelle Parsons who played Roseanne's mother. Oh, really? Um, reception, can you tell us, was Shelley Winters ever in Roseanne? Um, we're moving over to Alan's final telly of the day. Which, ladies and gentlemen, is a shocker because it is none other than the classic. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm saying this because I used to watch this saying, please, please make me laugh. Well, we watched it mainly because of him, didn't we? Because we like Duncan. Duncan Preston from Victoria Wood. Um, and like Marjorie Campy because she was in Brooklyn, wasn't she? She was. But I was watching it. No, she wasn't in Brookside. Are you sure? She was in Brookside. <laughs> Brookside, yeah. Brookside. Search your spirit. Um, oh, Stephen Lodge says love special. Sorry, Stephen Lodge. We're going to slate it now, oh, Stephen. Oh, I was watching an episode go, please, please make me laugh. And I'd never laugh. A surgical spirit. They were just, the storylines were just not funny. You know, there's so, you know. Um, but, but at the same time, saying that. I was obsessed with it. What's her name, the main one? Sheila Sabatini. What's her actual name? Nicola? Nicola McAuliffe. Look at Nicola McAuliffe's unprofessional arms. you think she'd have froze for a photograph, not allowing her arms to be blurry mid-shot. <laughs> Look at that. CBB side, so goodbye. Bye. Bye, loves. Um, I just used to, I was a little bit obsessed with it. Oh, think... Timmy, you're going to miss a great final song. Oh, you can watch a catch-up. Um... I used to just watch it when it was re thingied on on Granada Plus or something. In, in the later days, in your yeah. adult days. And it used to be on, it used to be back to back episodes on a Saturday morning. Um People's Office says I don't remember this at all. Um I just I just thought who's it aimed at? Andrew Chapman says he's got the Surgical Spirits bo- box set. Um Philippe says he loved Surgical Spirits and they he's all got, blurred into one. He's got Nicola McAuliffe's book, A Fanny Full of Soap. We went to go and see Nicola McAuliffe, didn't we? In uh, what was it called? In a fringe show at the Finborough Theatre in London. Yeah, shooting fringe. Tiny little theatre. In the what, what year was it? About two thousand and eight or nine, seven. Uh, something like that. And there was a baby monitor in the theatre. And it was the um, it was about what's her face, the Queen. Um, it was about um, Wallace, Wallace, Wallace Simpson. Simpson, and the Queen. So it was just two actors, and the guy was from. Um, I think from the Queen. And she played Wallace Simpson. And he was the butler, wasn't he? But in the theatre, there was a baby monitor, and it was right behind me and Alan. Which... And we were giggling about it, because we reckon that the other listening. end of the baby monitor was in McAuliffe's dressing room. <laughs> and she'd have been listening, going, how many are in tonight? So I was going, oh, well, I can't wait to see... I can't wait to see Sheila Sabatini. <laughs> we were saying... We kept saying Sheila Sabatini quite loud near the baby monitor, imagining she could hear it and get giddy about fans being in. And unfortunately, we got sort of like reduced price tickets, didn't we? I think we got it for like 50, 50p to fill it. And it wasn't full. To paper the house, it wasn't very good, was it? No. I'm, I'm glad I saw her. Cause she's, I know, she's... She, I mean, she was in Chit Chit Bang Bang, hadn't she? Alan also swears that he saw her eyes peeping through a little curtain, curtain. before the show, yeah. but I don't reckon that happened. I think she was a little bit gutted <laughs> that, oh, it's only half full. <laughs> They've only paid 20p, I'm only going to give them... But she was the Baroness in... 50% energy. She was Baroness in Chit Chit Bang Bang not long after that or before it. Oh, was she? On the, in the West End? Yeah. She's a singer. Um. Uh, Simon Jones says... Um, I remember Victoria Wood. I oh, know that was about Victoria Wood. Um, Alex Johnson says, was this a show Duncan Preston bashed his head on an overhead mic and it was kept in? No, I think, you oh, get, no, I think you're blurring it with Acorn Antiques. Um, Shelley Winters played Roseanne's grandmother. Ah, so I wasn't now, all that wrong. I don't know I? if reception came through with that. Oh, sorry, we're talking there about... There he is. Yeah. Um, reception didn't come through, but it's it's there. Um, Nicola McAuliffe was only 38 here. Oh, yeah, I can tell. Stunned. 
Elaine Pepper Rogers popped in saying, hello, Alan and Jamie. Um, so, yeah, that's our Friday night in March in 1994. Right, let me try and play the finale song and then we'll come back after this. Um, but thank you all for hanging out with us. Martin Hyde has just appeared and says that Surgical Spirit was rubbish. It was, wasn't it, We agree. We agree. It was proper rubbish. But I did watch it. Unless he means this was rubbish. Tonight was rubbish. It has been a bit rubbish because my buttons aren't working. I don't think Martin would like Surgical Spirit. Um, Jason says he did. Of course he replied, but it was like ages ago. We we didn't. Don't doubt our receptionist. Right. I'm going to try and play the finale, but there'll be a slight delay. Um, but we'll probably be back after it, yeah? Yeah, just for a little chit-chat. That's Stella there to keep you occupied while we <laughs> uh, go to the editing suite to find out if there's a link for the finale song. And here it is. They're sort of like trying to be like, we can make an album. <laughs> yeah. Somebody out there, let, let us make an album. <laughs> and also a bit like TIE. A couple of people, I think, BG Bear and uh, Lily Law both said, Jane, the woman who couldn't say no. <laughs> oh. Because she had both Rod and Freddie. I imagine going, no, no, no. Freeze. So what have we learned here, kids? <laughs> Um, There's somebody in the middle of us that looks a little bit... She looks a little bit Jane. Jane. My girl's world. Um, Tishy Rushworth says, Shame Jeffrey didn't say no to Rod, Jane and Freddie every time they wanted to sing. Lily Law said they look like camp sailors in those plus fours. They do, with little strappy socks. Um, Tushy Rushworth says, Well, I've got a moment. Can we send our condolences to Bullseyes Tony Green, to the family of Tony Green... Um, R.I.P. Tony Green, who of course was the fella who'd stand uh, by the ball, the dartboard. In and one! Did, he didn't say that, did he? Did he not, did he not do that? No, much? I think Toshi Rushworth used to, uh, Tony Green used to just say, uh, in your own time, Sharon, take it did easy. Did you not do it in one and in two? Don't worry, Sharon, you t- take your time here. Just okay. breathe, take your time. That's it, just down the line there. <laughs> It's a 20. Just take your time. I don't know if he did in one. He might have done. I thought he did in one, in two. <laughs> Simon Jones says Roger and Freddie looked a little bit Jean-Paul Gaultier with those they, little they suits. They did, yeah. They did. And they all looked bigger. Freddie had a bit of a perm and Jane's hair looked Jane's dry hair, as fuck. Jane's hair looked like oh, it was too on. Jane needed product, didn't if it, she? If, if it had been spiked up, it was a bit Labyrinth, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a bit Jared from Labyrinth. Um, Jason Rigby says, reception says Tony Green did 
do the shouty bit. Thank you. Um, as did Philip Jack Fortinbras. So he did do the in ones. Condolences to Tony's family. Scylla, did you ever pop up on Bullseye? She wouldn't have, would she? Carolee Scott did. Different studio. Scylla was just... Scylla was LWT and that's it, wasn't it? I don't think Scylla would do darts. Scylla, now, 1994, you were working on a children's album in Australia. I'm sure you remember this. And one of the songs on that was I Want to Have a Gander at a Panda. And that was going to be tonight's finale. But... um, Technical problems. Oh, you can find it. Technical issues. No, I've got it, but it's not playing. Things aren't playing. We'll save that for another week. I pressed my Scylla button. There's nothing... No Scylla. That could be from inside her crypt. Sue Pollard. I can see Scylla in the corner. <laughs> there's Look. a tiny Scylla, but there's no Sue Pollard. So I can't play anything. We've had grommets. <laughs> uh, Martin I says we need to talk about these segments. We do. Martin, I have to find things which are going to be copyright free so it's dead hard. Because otherwise YouTube um, take us off air. They slap our wrists. Um, so it's really hard to they find say, things. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't give stuff to strangers. Um, Scylla says Jane. Don't give copyright to strangers. Scylla says Jane's uh, look dry as bush fire. It? it looked like Wurzel Gummidge. <laughs> and Scylla says she does remember the Gander with a Panda album. I don't think it was ever released, Scylla. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, uh, Scylla says me singing about pandas would be joy for all. Um, Dame Sue has been silenced. I could find her and get her. Dame Sue will never be silenced. She's definitely going to be back on this system. It's just lost all its links. Have lost. I don't know why. I think maybe... Um... In two weeks. You're not here next week, are you? No, you're... No, I'm not here next week. I'm in Houston. Is in Houston, Texas? I'm in Root in to- to- in Houston. And I'd like everyone to look up now the Neon Boot Club in Houston, Texas. So because there's a rumour that I might be going there. And you can do some thinking, aren't you? I'm going to do some shooting. Shooting. I don't know because it's Houston. It's the Shoot. Houston Rodeo. So this week and next oh, you're week, Houston Rodeo. rodeo. Aren't you? You're going to be rodeoing. So it's all kind of like too busy. Houston's too busy. You, so might, you might need to borrow Nibbles' his shorts. And I can go down the Houston and tie your little um, gingham blouse up. But the ne- the Neon Boot Club, um, it's like it looks like the gayest club ever, but it's not. It's like it's butch cowboys. Um, but there's line dancing, and in the middle of the um, thing is there's a bucking bronco you that sort- you can get on. You're sorted for entertainment next week. And they all wear cowboy boots, which look camp as Christmas, but they're all as butch as ever. Martin says you're off to York next week. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're going to uh, we're going line dancing. That'll and then I'm going to get on a bronco Billy. <laughs> Apparently that's his name. <laughs> and um, we're going to, what else are you doing? Shooting gallery. I'm going shooting. I'm not doing that. With a real gun. No, I'm not that. I don't really, I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm going to do it because it's like a bucket listy thing just to have ticked mm. off my bucket list. Um, so yeah. they said Bullseye was from the Midlands. She was LWT LW, only. She was. She didn't want to leave uh, Bobby and Bobby Jr. that much, mm. did she? Um, oh, Alex Johnson also said we should raise a glass. Of course we should. To Dave Myers. I know. I think he, I think he died last, um, was it? Um, Wednesday, but we didn't mention it. Uh, might have been just after. Maybe it was Thursday. Do you know, I watched the end Bregham of today. Oh. You know, from where they go out west. We love the hairy bikers, and I, I, didn't I, we? I shed some tears because they have a little cuddle on the ferry. Because oh. he said, I'm not... He said, I'll, he said um, oh, I didn't think I'd be doing this, getting them back on my bike and coming. Oh. And they give, a little, they give each other... Oh, like their new programme. You're filling up I now. I filled up. Yeah, he just looked like such a good fella, didn't he? Oh, he's just full of joy. Yeah, that's what I liked about him. He was full of joy. He had quite a rough. I think he had a rough child. His mum died early. I think she died, and so he looked after his dad and cooked. And that's where he, the cooking came from. Um, then he went to art school. Then he was a makeup artist. A makeup artist. And he put. He was the man who put the stripe on Adam Ant's face. And I think he might have done fashion school as well. Fashion. Yeah, as well. he did. And then he did Strictly. Oh, I loved him. I did genuinely. He's one of those people, like Alan says, that's just so full of joy. Yeah. I like people who just bring joy. And he loved food, he loved cooking, and he loved all the people on his journey, on their journey. He loved them. Yeah. And they loved them. Real down to earth chat. Darren says, Dave and Cy were on this morning before Christmas, and they were both lovely. Oh, I bet they were. Um... And if you haven't seen our photo that we did of them in lockdown, oh, we should. 
I can't find it. I could try and find Have it. Have a look for it. So let me it see. One if one I can find it was one it. of my best ones, wasn't it? Let's see if and I can we find it. it. We 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 took the photo the day they were in Scarborough, and we didn't know. But um, luckily, the local news York BBC York showed them. Yeah, showed Dave and Sai, Alan and Jamie in their back garden, dressed up as the hairy bikers. And I'm stood on a free a breeze block to give me extra height. You don't half look like him, my goodness. Colin, you look like you look you look like I him. don't think I look like you do. Dave. But you look like you him. You're like great. the spit of him. And that beard was painted on. And all our little uh these are all these were all things like that we looked up funny like funny Geordie, like regional food. Foods. Yeah, just regional food I guess. Um Good night to Nigel, who's going to bed because he's up at five o'clock. Night night, dolls. Um, we're going to head off soon. Peggy's pottering about and everything's kind of going down everything's on here. Everything's coming up roses and buttercups. So I need to get this all working because I'm teaching. Um, so I need to get everything connected again. Going to get myself connected. The writing's on, on the wall. wall. I don't know what's happened. I'm, I'm hoping... I can turn it off and turn it off again and it'll all be working. That's what they tell you to do in IT. Yeah. But shall we leave? Shall we leave, people? Yes, we're going to say goodnight um, so those can catch up watch, watching Celebrity Big Brother. Well, um, I'll try and put... Um, I'll try and put something on for you, but it'll take a moment. But there will be a song to say goodnight to. And we're in back in two weeks, are we? Back here in two weeks' time. Two weeks' time. So we'll see you then. And it's mid-March by then. I know, we need to get another video made as well, don't we? We do. We need to think of something and get one done. All right, loves. Thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend and great week. Good night, everyone. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Thanks for the photos. They're fantastic. to all the decent music, eh? The music what I like. That old time rock and roll. woo Just take those old records off the shelf. I sit and listen to them by myself. Today's music ain't got the same soul. I like that old time rock and roll. Don't try to take me to a disco. You'll never even get me out on the floor. In ten minutes I'll be out Same soul. I like that old time rock and roll.